Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Gina. In this video, we are going to discuss about the greenhouse effect. Before we start the topic, I want to do a quick recap on the black body. If you haven't watched the video on black body, I'll put the link on there. So a black body radiates in all wavelengths, and the amount of radiation that it emits is described by the Planck's function. And by setting the derivative of the Planck's function equals to zero, we can find the wavelength at which the object emits the most radiation. And this equation is called the Wang's law. And we can also take the integral of the Planck's function to find the amount of energy radiated by a black body. And this is the Stefan Boltzmann's law. And the last law that we discussed in the black body's video is the Kirchhoff's law which says that the emissivity equals to the absorptivity, and both of them can be a function of wavelength. And since the Planck's function is a function of temperature, so the amount of radiation that emits by an object depends on the temperature of the object. For example, for the sun, its temperature is around 6,000 Kelvin. And using the Planck's function, we get a curve like this on the left. And using the Wayne's law, we can find that the maximum radiation emitted by the sun is around 0.5 micrometers, which is in the range of visible light. As for the Earth, its surface is around 288 Kelvin. And using the Planck's law, we get a curve on the right, with maximum radiation around 10 micrometers, which is a lot longer than the radiation emitted by the sun. So we also call the radiation emitted by the sun the short wave radiation, or the solar radiation. And we call the radiation emitted by the Earth the long wave radiation, or the terrestrial radiation. As we just saw on the last slide, long wave spectrum does not overlap the short wave spectrum. And note that the surface of the Earth is like a black body. It can absorb most of the incoming solar radiation. At the same time, it emits long-wave radiation. And the scattering of the long-wave radiation is negligible, so we can ignore the scattering of the long-wave radiation. And some gases in the atmosphere can absorb certain wavelengths in the long-wave spectrum, and we'll discuss that in the next slide. Another component that acts as black body in the atmosphere is the cloud meaning that the absorptivity of clouds nearly equals to 1, so it absorbs all the incident long-wave radiation. And remember the Kirchhoff's law? When the absorptivity equals to 1, then the emissivity also equals to 1, so the clouds also emit radiation. Here's the atmospheric spectrum. For each row, it shows the absorption spectrum for different molecules, the absorption is the y-axis. If absorption equals to 100%, it means the objects absorb all the radiation at that wavelength. Remember that the solar radiation is in the visible light range. And for the long-wave radiation, it is around 10 micrometers. The first thing to note on this graph is that the water vapor absorbs a lot of long-wave radiation. It absorbs some of the long-wave radiation at wavelength smaller than 8.5 micrometers, and it absorbs most of the wavelength greater than 12 micrometers. As for the carbon dioxide, it absorbs the long-wave radiation wavelength between 4 and 5 micrometers, and it absorbs the wavelength greater than 11 micrometers. And for methane, it absorbs the terrestrial radiation at about 4 and 7 micrometers. And for nitrous oxide, it absorbs the long-wave radiation at around 5 and 7 micrometers. So we call the gases that absorb the long-wave radiation the greenhouse gases. The important ones are the water vapors, carbon dioxide, and methane. In the bottom row, it shows the absorption spectrum of the total atmosphere. And a quick note, most of the long-wave radiation will be absorbed by the atmosphere, except for the wavelength between 8.5 to 11 micrometers. 
and we call this window the atmospheric window. So here is how it works. As I mentioned before, the water vapor, CO2, and methane are important greenhouse gases. At first, the sun sends the solar radiation to the Earth, and the surface of the Earth absorbs the solar radiation. And since the surface of the Earth acts like a black body for short waves, so it will absorb all the incident solar radiation, then the surface emits long wave radiation. Then the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, they absorb most of the radiation from the surface, except for the radiation between 8.5 to 11 micrometers, which is the atmospheric window. And the clouds can close this radiation window as they absorb and emit the lower radiation as black bodies. So what is the greenhouse effect? What does it do to the temperature of the Earth? Let's start with the first panel. If there is no greenhouse gases, it's simpler. The solar radiation comes into the atmosphere and is absorbed by the surface of the Earth. Then the surface acts like a blood body, so it will emit radiation described by the Planck's function. And we've seen that in the beginning of this video, the surface of the Earth has temperature around 288 Kelvin. So the surface emits long-wave radiation, which is the radiation in the infrared range. However, in the panel B, when there are greenhouse gases, first step is the same, we have incoming solar radiation. Then the surface again, it will absorb all the incoming solar radiation and emits the long-wave infrared radiation. However, if there are greenhouse gases, Gases like water vapor, CO2, or methane, they would absorb the lower radiation, and since they also act like black bodies, so they would also emit infrared radiation. So as a result, we have more incoming radiation. Most of them are from the solar radiation, and some of them are the lower radiation emitted by the greenhouse gases. Here's a summary of the previous slide, but in words. In the presence of greenhouse gases, they absorb the lower radiation, which heats up the atmosphere. And since they act like a blood body, so they also emit radiation. And it also emits at a long wave radiation range. And the radiation emitted by the greenhouse gases again reach down to the surface. And the surface acts as a black body, so it absorbs the lower radiation emitted by the greenhouse gases and warms the surface. So the net effect of greenhouse gases is to warm the surface. That's the end of the video. If you like my videos, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.